with you today. I am so glad that you have joined me for our 15-minute daily devotion today. I pray that you are in good health and great spirits. Listen, I am Pastor Carrie, pastor of Emerging Generations here at New Birth, pastored by none other than Dr. Jamal H. Bryant. Listen, I want to stay connected with you always. You can follow me on Ms. Carrie Baby at Instagram. And more importantly, I want to make sure that you are connected with the church. If you've not downloaded our New Birth app, you can do that right now. And you can always Always go to newbirth.org to stay up to date with everything that we're doing. Listen, today I want you to like, I want you to comment, and I want you to commit to sharing this with about 15 different people. Listen, we want to make sure that we get the word out, we get the news out so that everyone can be blessed by this 15-minute daily devotional. Listen, today I want us to talk about whose house? <laughs> God's house. Our focus today is going to be on kingdom stewardship and how to manage manage the call to God's house. Listen, let me start by saying to you that I am a proud 80s baby. Do you hear me? I am a part of Generation X and I was born just one year shy of being a millennial. But I am grateful to be a part of a generation that I believe is the perfect mixture of a lot of old school and a whole bunch of new school, you know? Listen, while we can probably debate about which generation is better for ours, I I would like to think that we would all agree on the fact that during the 80s in particular, that there was not another group today that impacted hip hop culture the way that Run DMC did when they came out in 1984. Listen, but even greater was when the infamous hip hop classic came out, Run's House, in 1988. Listen, after that song, none of us were ever the same. I don't care where you were from, I don't care what your background was, what you did, what you were doing, what your age was, I don't care how long you've been saved, how long you've been talking in tongues, whenever you hear whose house, <laughs> your automatic response is runs house. Listen, we love that song. The premise of the song is that no matter you know where they were, who they were performing with at a concert or wherever they went, Run DMC wanted the world to know that they owned the house and that they always had the bill. Listen, they were boldly expressing what they felt about themselves and how they moved in the earth. Listen, but today I want us to focus our 15 minutes together, not concerning Run's house, but I want to talk a little bit, a lot, about God's house. As you know, our focus for this month as a family and as a community of faith has been on stewardship. And if you know anything about kingdom stewardship, you understand that when the Bible says in Psalms 24 and 1 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Listen, this has nothing to do with Run's house. It has nothing to do with my house or even your house. But we all understand that by this passage, that everything we have, everything that has been provided to us, every place in which our our feet tread was established for us long before we were conceived and even entered the world. When we understand this, we know that we have created nothing in and of ourselves. We have fashioned nothing, but we currently borrow everything. Nothing has originated from us, but it was by God and by God alone, whereby everything that was made exists, every concept Every idea, every invention was birthed from the divine genius of the Father, of the one and only living God. The Bible declares to us in 1 Corinthians 4 and 7, it says, For who regards you as superior? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you have not received it? Listen, Isaiah 66 and 1 says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. It says, where is the house you will build for me? And where is my resting place? Where will my resting place be? What are you saying to me, Pastor Gary? What I'm telling you today during our time, that there is nothing that we have 
There is no place that we can go, that we can lay claim to having established for ourselves. But can I tell you, it is by the grace and mercy of God. It is by the genius and innovation of the Father that we exist and we benefit from his divine creation. When you understand this, you understand kingdom stewardship. And when you understand kingdom stewardship, you then understand management. What is kingdom stewardship. I'm so glad you asked me. Listen, kingdom stewardship, according to one of my favorite preachers, teachers, and formidable theological minds of our generation, Dr. Tony Evans, in his incredible book, Kingdom Stewardship, Managing All of Life Under God's Rule, he tells us that kingdom stewardship can be defined as this, the divinely authorized responsibility of believers to oversee the protection and expansion of the assets, time, talents, and treasures that God has entrusted to them to manage, hear this, on his behalf. According to Dr. Evans, kingdom stewards are believers, listen, who faithfully oversee the protection and expansion of the assets of God as entrusted to them to manage on his behalf. So listen, kingdom stewardship is knowing that nothing belongs to you. It's knowing that you are using resources, hear this, that have been advanced to you so that you can fulfill the purpose of God in the earth. This is knowing that everything you have belongs to God and that you are simply the manager, hear this, of his house. At his core, listen, at its core, kingdom stewardship is simply about management. When God created you, he also endowed you with roles and responsibilities of a manager, of one who will steward his resources. Listen, when you, I know that you thought that kingdom stewardship was just about money, but it's about money and more than that. Not, it's about your ability to identify yourself as a manager hired by God, hired by the God of the universe to do two primary things according to Dr. Evans. Here they are. Number one, to protect and number two, to expand the assets of your God. Your job as a kingdom steward is not just to guard assets, hear this, but it is also to grow them according to the vision and the mission of the Father. Psalms 115 and 16 says, the heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. Listen, while on the earth we are mandated to protect and expand the these three things, our time, our talent, and our treasures. And so as kingdom managers, the question that we must constantly ask ourselves every day, how am I protecting my time, my talent, and my treasure? Listen, with your time, do you guard it fiercely? Or do you give your time away frivolously? Are you just not mindful of your time? You waste your time. How do you protect your time every single day? Your talent. Do you passionately guard and protect your talent as something that is rare and special that the Father has given to you to advance the kingdom of God on the earth? Or do you mismanage your talent? Do you let everybody touch your talent? Do you, do you let everybody mishandle your talent or molest your talent whereby God gets no glory and in in honor? Is your talent all about you? What are you doing to protect your talent? talent, your treasures. How do you protect your wealth with wisdom in alignment with God's will and vision for your life? Or do you scatter it with no regard? You just disregard it as if it's nothing that matters at all. After we ask ourselves, how do we protect our time, talent, and treasures, we also have to ask ourselves, how am I now expanding my time? How do I expand my talent? And how do I expand my treasure? Here's the thing. Some of you are masters at protecting them, but you are rookies when it comes to expanding them. Expansion is just as important and just as powerful as protection is. Listen, 
Do you know that God is the God of multiplication? Listen, do you know that God is an investor and that he is looking for a return on everything that he has given to you to steward as an investment? Listen, you have to ask yourself every day, how am I expanding my time? How much do you accomplish during the day? How do you value your time every single day whereby you are using divine strategy so that you have a guide as to how your time is allocated so that God is glorified and you can fulfill purpose in the earth? Oh, you thought your time was just your time. <laughs> it's absolutely not. Your time should be governed by the will of the Father so that everything your hand touches, everything you do even when you rest it should be ordained by the way in which God has given you direction for how to manage your time listen you should be able to do more now than ever with your time by maximizing it and expanding it you should be doing so well with your time that you have left over time during the day because you are using it in a way where your time is streamlined your life is streamlined and you are only yielding your time to the things that matter, to the relationships that matter, to the businesses that matter, to the ministries that matter, so that you are not wasting time, but that you are expanding time. Listen, what are you doing with your talent? Do you cultivate your talent under the auspices of the Holy Spirit? How do you sharpen your talent every day? How do you exercise your talent every day? What tools are you using to perfect your talent? Now, I know that you are good at what you do, but don't you understand that in order for talent to be multiplied, in order for talent to be expanded, that there has to be a level of intentionality for you growing in the thing that God has called you to do? What are you reading? What are you studying? What are the things that you need in your field to become the top 10 at what you do? Or do you sit on your talent? <laughs> Have you decided that you're not even going to use your talent because the church that you go to, they won't call your name. They won't make you a pastor. They won't make you an elder. They won't do what you want them to do. So you choose to sit on your talent. Do you sit on your talent because you feel like it's not enough, that you wish that you had the talent of somebody else? Do you disregard? and disrespect the talent that the Father has given to you because you think that somebody else's talent is better. How are you expanding your talent? How are you mindful of the thing that the Lord has placed in your hand that only you can uniquely do in the earth? Listen, then you've got to ask yourself, what am I doing with my treasure? Do I look for ways to grow and expand my treasure by multiplying it through multiple vehicles as led by the Holy Spirit? Listen, do I sow freely and do I do it with great expectation? of a harvest? Listen, or do I sow sparingly only to now reap sparingly? Are you grumbling and complaining when it's time for you to tithe? Huh? Are, are you grumbling and complaining when it's time for you to give or sow a seed? Do you, do, do you hoard your treasure? Some people are so stingy they don't want to give anything, but then wonder why new blessings cannot come into their life. Listen, do you curse what the Lord has given to you? you by not sowing, by not giving so that you have no return in your life. Listen, you've got to ask yourself, how am I not just protecting, but how am I expanding that in which the Father has given to me? Listen, as managers, as kingdom stewards, these are very critical questions that we've got to ask ourselves every single day, every day that we are engaging our world and the thing that God has called us to manage. We've got to make sure that we are alive. Aligned, hear this, with the will of the Father, and hear this, the management of his house. His house is not simply a building, and we all ought to know that by now because you are watching virtually right now. But can I tell you, his house is everywhere. His house is everything that you have. Every place that you go is God's house. Or are you arrogant enough to think that it's really just your house, that you did everything? That everything that you have, everything that you touch, every place that you go, everything that you live in is simply what you created and what you came up with, and you owe God nothing. Mm. This week, I want to challenge you to ask yourself, whose house is it? I'm not 
talking about Run's house anymore. But when I ask you whose house is it this time, I pray that your answer is loudly God's house and that you humble yourself this week as a steward and as a manager so that you are managing what God has given you according to his will, not yours, and according to his way. Listen, and in the moment that you begin to feel otherwise, in the moment that that ego begins to rise up and you don't want to tithe, you don't want to give, you don't want to expand your uh, gifts and talents, you don't want to cultivate the time that God has given to you, and you begin to make it about yourself. Because listen, I can tell you, we live in a time where everything becomes about us. We can be so self-focused, so self-conceited that we put God on the back burner and act as if we have done everything on our own. But listen, can't nobody check you the way that the Father can check you. And so when you begin to feel that way this week, I want you to remember these words that the Lord spoke to Job in Job 38, 4 through 7. He, he says, listen, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked it off? Who marked its dimension? Surely you know. Who stretched out a measuring line across it? On what were its footlings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While in the morning stars sang together and all of the angels shouted for joy. Where were you when God created the earth and knit everything together so perfectly in a way that he would call you forth to steward it, to grow it, to expand it, to protect it so that you would be able to fulfill his purpose in the earth. Listen, I, I don't have an answer outside of the fact that God, it is your house and I willingly steward it. I steward it with gladness, with happiness. I don't complain. I don't mumble. I don't get frustrated because I understand that you have given it to me to protect and to expand. And it is my job as a manager and my job as a kingdom steward to do so so that your glory and honor is felt in the earth. Listen, I love y'all so much. You know I do. And I pray that you were blessed today by our 15 minutes together and that you would look at stewardship from a completely different perspective today. Listen, if you want to join, we want to welcome you as a part of this faith community. You can do so right now by going to newbirth.org. And if you say, Pastor Carrie, I want to sow into this moment. I want to go to a greater level as a kingdom steward. Listen, I want you to do so right now because I can't even tell you. If I told you a million times, I would have to tell you a million times more. This is fertile ground. And you can do so by looking at the prompts below that will help you go to the vehicle where you can sow right now. Listen, I love you. I'm praying for you. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you are prosperous and that we grow as kingdom stewards together. See you.